three, two, one, blast off! All right, here we are. The very first training of the very first module of the Experience Product Master Class. And this first module is all about your profitable product idea. And that's where all blockbuster hits start with a great idea. Many people jump into product creation before they've taken the time to get crystal clear on their idea. So they waste a lot of time on something that may not have market appeal. In this module, we'll help you bypass the biggest mistake product creators make. So you can enter module two confident in your idea and ready to start creating your irresistible offer and set you up for success in module three, where you'll launch your first version of your product. Because your mission is to design, launch, and profit from an experienced product in 12 weeks or less. Now, to bring you back to this present moment, here in this first session, it's all about starting with the end in mind. Because I'm gonna show you how to put the money you just invested in EPM right back in your pocket, if not a whole lot more. So let's look at what launching your experienced product may mean for you, because knowing where you wanna go helps you figure out how to get there. And one of the most powerful ways to create a picture of where you wanna go is to set clear revenue goals. In other words, how much money do you wanna make? Show me the money. <laughs> I call this the show me the money video because you can't be in business without money. And in this session, we're gonna set some clear minimum target and stretch revenue goals for your minimum viable experience product or MVP for short. And we're gonna focus on that in our next session. But first, I wanna address this question of money because it's a big sticking point for a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners. For many of my students, money is not their top motivation. And that may be the case for you. Money may or may not be the primary thing that's driving you. It may not even be one of your top three motivations. It's not for me. And yet we all still need to make money if we're gonna have the impact and lifestyle we desire. So on the screen here, you can see what's called the motivation matrix. And these are 13 of the most common motivations that Harvard Business School identified through a survey of over 2,000 entrepreneurs, men and women just like you, of all ages, to identify why they started businesses and what they wanted out of being an entrepreneur. And they discovered that the number one motivation for all entrepreneurs, regardless of age and gender, was autonomy, or the freedom to be a master of your own time and creator of your destiny, which interestingly is the exact opposite of non-entrepreneurs who value security. So if you're like most entrepreneurs, you want the freedom to build your business and your experience product your way, in a way that feels good to you and is an expression of who you are and the gifts you bring to the world. And that ultimately brings you real freedom, time freedom, choice freedom, location freedom, and financial freedom. So while much of this program is about how to design and launch your experience product, and we'll start that conversation in the next video when we talk about your path to a blockbuster hit product, I'm very deliberately talking about the money first because EPM is not just about creating any product, it's about creating a profitable product. And in order to make the money you need to create the autonomy and the lifestyle you desire, you have to serve your market in a way that they want, need, and are willing to pay for. It's the difference between showing up at a party and saying, here I am. Point is that I've arrived. Versus showing up and saying, there you are. There you are. And I know that's a radical thought in our selfie obsessed world, but it's the shift that we're here to make because experience products are all about taking a customer first approach. The customer is always first. And focusing on your customers first, it doesn't have to compromise your ideals. Though it does mean listening to something other than your own inner guidance. It means listening to your customers. As Zig Ziglar famously said, you can have everything you want in life if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. And I always say that before you can make money while you sleep, you have to be able to make money while you're awake. And that means having real conversations with real people, at least at first. The kind of people who are gonna pull out their wallets and buy from you. And I share all this to set the stage for what you may be feeling as we have this conversation, because many entrepreneurs are allergic to goal setting. Why? Because goals can feel like the opposite of freedom, because you're committing to something specific. Like my student who will call X 
X has four unpublished books in dozens of workshop and product ideas. She started a weekly podcast and she wants to start doing monthly webinars as a marketing tool. She's busy creating a lot of stuff, but she's not making much money and her work, it's not getting seen. She's not making an impact with her creations. So X's top motivation is variety. And because she's driven by variety, she's driven to just create and create and create without really taking the time to get her work out to the world. And when I asked X if this was really the best approach for her business, she said, Marisa, if I didn't need to run a business to earn money, I wouldn't, even though I'd spend my time working on many of the same projects. And if I didn't have so much content to share, I wouldn't keep being tempted to run a business in order to do that. And when I read this email from Student X, my heart just sank. I thought this is precisely the reason why she was spinning her wheels without seeing the success that she wants. Because here's the thing, she needs to earn money in order to make the impact she wants because she also has the desire to get her products and her ideas seen by a lot of people. So they can benefit from her work. And if she's not charging money, marketing in the right ways and focusing on bringing at least one product to market, she can't do that. As long as she feels like she just wants to focus on her ideas without worrying about all this business stuff, she's gonna stay in this cycle of struggling and struggling and struggling without seeing any kind of reward. Because here's the thing, the more you earn, the more you can give. And the more people pay, the more they can receive. So if people aren't paying for your work, chances are they don't truly value what you do. And here's how that plays out. Not only do you not get the value, neither do they. Because when someone doesn't fully value your offer, they're not fully committed to doing the work and getting the amazing transformation that you provide. Think about your own situation and the things you've invested in. Chances are you are far more likely to do the work and get the result because you'd put your hard earned money into it. And chances are the more money you put into it, the more of your attention it got. And that's why it's so important that you made this investment to be part of EPM because you've invested money to be here. You're also more likely to invest your time and attention and energy. You're now inspired and motivated to make real progress to get a return on your investment by realizing our program goals, launching your minimum viable product, making your first sale, proving your results with your first three sales, then ultimately iterating your way to a whole lot more. And here's what else is really interesting. Because you've invested in someone else, other people are more likely to invest in you because you put your money where your mouth is. So I'm not gonna get all personal development on you, but there's a series of stages that every human being goes through as they pass from child to adult. And when we're children, we just focus on taking, we just take what we want. We take food, we take everything that we need to survive. And as we grow into adolescence, we start to shift our focus to achieving. We wanna achieve and be the best that we can be. And at a certain point in our lives, many people shift to giving as they realize that they've already achieved a lot. And while that's hugely satisfying, there comes a point in all our lives when we wanna be of service. Many of my EPM students are in the giving stage, and that's a beautiful thing. And then you reach the next stage when you realize that if you're gonna keep on giving, you need to receive. So you're not like the giving tree that gives and gives and gives until it has nothing left to give. The more you receive, the more you can give. And the more both you and your customers get into the upward spiral of growth. So marketing and sales complete the cycle of giving and receiving that allows you to make the biggest possible impact in the world while living the lifestyle you desire, which fills your tank and allows you to give even more. I used to be an artist and a documentary filmmaker making $50,000 a year. And when I started my business, the idea of having this million dollar a year business wasn't even on my radar. And the idea of having a $10 million a year business serving thousands of students, well, that was pretty much unimaginable. I never thought that I was gonna be the kind of person who could or would make a lot of money because I didn't really value money. I valued creativity, I valued impact, I valued intellectual challenge. I valued autonomy and variety and altruism in making a difference, but I didn't really value money. But what I've realized along the way is that valuing money and building commitments and goals and structures around that value, it actually creates freedom. 
So let me share one of my favorite short stories of all time by a Hungarian writer named Iles Akinger. It's called The Bound Man, and it's all about a circus performer who performs wrapped up in ropes. From head to toe, he's wrapped up in ropes, and yet he's got this amazing agility and grace. He can do acrobatics and bend and twist and flip and do all kinds of things that just has his audience in awe and wonder at his grace and agility. But then the bound man began to wonder, if I'm this agile and this graceful, all bound up in ropes, I wonder what it would be like for me if I didn't have these ropes. So he puts this knife in his teeth and he heads down to the river where he cuts himself free of the ropes that had bound him for the first few years of his career as a performer. And when he tries to perform and flip and dance like he had before, he discovers that he's lost all his grace and all his agility. He realizes in horror that it was the ropes, the constraints that had given him the freedom to perform the way that he performed and supported him in having the grace and agility that just made him so incredible. Now here's where it gets even more interesting. Franz Kafka read this story by Iles Akinger, and he wrote this short review of what made this story so great. And here's what he wrote. To have the feeling of being bound and at the same time the other, yet to know if one were unbound, it would be far worse. While commitments and goals and frameworks and structure can feel uncomfortable or limiting, they actually create an agility and a grace that isn't possible to attain without them. That's why it's so important to define your goals or exactly what you're hoping to achieve over the next 12 weeks. Because as uncomfortable as it may feel to put yourself on the hook for something, to really commit and be all in, even when you're outside your comfort zone and you don't know what's gonna happen next, not setting goals is far worse. So here's the brain science behind this. Your brain loves two things more than anything else. It loves to feel safe and in control, and it loves to win. And therein lies the conflict of interest. The constant push and pull, start and stop between doing what's needed to win, which can often require risk and uncertainty, while also balancing our need for control and certainty. And that can feel paralyzing at times because we're most comfortable when we know exactly what to expect, when tomorrow is the same as today, is the same as yesterday. After all, we survived yesterday and we're still standing. So if today is the same as yesterday, well then we can have some certainty that we can survive that too. And before you know it, 10 years have gone by and our inner voice is screaming because we're surviving, but we're not winning. We're not feeling dopamine, the happy chemical our brains release when we're winning. Because in order to win, our brains need to know exactly what winning looks like. But as soon as we know what winning looks like, we're faced with the fact that we could lose. And that feels unsafe and uncertain. But aren't we losing anyway if we're not winning? If we're not challenging ourselves? If we're not feeling good? Well, that's the grand cosmic joke that plays through our lives and learning how to navigate between safety and aspiration is what it means to be human. So welcome to the club. Welcome to the biggest club on earth. You are officially human. So will you trust me to support you in winning in a way that also feels safe and gives you more certainty? Because thousands of students have been where you are now and they've made it. I've got a proven step-by-step -step plan to support you in realizing your product goals. This is your Experience Product Flight Plan. And if you're watching this session before the welcome video on the dashboard of your membership site, don't worry. I explain this plan in full in that video. And while this flight plan gives you the entire ongoing plan for creating blockbuster hit experience products in this session, we're simply referencing this plan to help you set your product goals for our 12 weeks together. And just like our history of flight went from this to this to this over time, so too will the revenue from your experience product go from strength to strength over time. So while we're all about helping you reach the stars, we also know that you don't just go from zero to the moon. There are steps and stages along the way as you find your wings, get your product off the ground, and then learn how to really fly, climbing higher and higher and enjoying more results and success as you go. And that's why when it comes to your goals and aspirations for your business, I recommend you harness the power of these progressive stages and get them working for you. And this is how you can beat that push and pull between certainty and uncertainty and win more often. And you do that, 
by having not just one goal, you actually want to set a series of three specific goals, a minimum goal, a target goal, and a stretch goal. Because when you focus on only one goal, especially if it's an ambitious goal that's really far outside of your current reach, that feels scary. It's an all or nothing kind of approach. You've got nowhere to go if you don't hit that mark. It's all or nothing. And if you fall short of that one big hairy goal, you can feel like you've failed. You're not making the progress that you desire. And that's not setting your brain up to win. So having one big goal does not work with the natural punishment and reward system in your brain. Because when you're constantly falling short of your expectations, the brain blocks the release of those happy chemicals and you start to feel frustrated, overwhelmed, and stuck. You may find yourself procrastinating or even wanting to give up or walk away. And that's no good, no bueno whatsoever. Uh-oh, no bueno. In contrast, when you have these three types of goals, you do harness the power of your brain's chemistry and you can feel motivated and like you are making progress. Having a minimum goal allows you to feel like, okay, if I just hit this goal, I've achieved something. I've done something that I set out to do. Just like you have a minimum viable product, think of this as your minimum viable goal. What do you want to happen as a minimum at the end of this Experience Product Masterclass? I'll say that again. What do you want to happen as a minimum at the end of the Experience Product Masterclass? Make this a goal that you know you can confidently say, Nailed it! And when you set a minimum goal that is in your reach to accomplish with the right training and support, which you get here in this program, it allows you to feel like you're moving towards your expectations, like winning is possible. So your minimum goal is what's enough. For example, what can you count as a minimum win? Maybe it's simply completing the MVP track of this program, or perhaps it's completing the MVP track and launching your minimum viable product by a specific date before the end of the program. Or maybe for you, the minimum goal is making your first sale or to prove viability by getting three sales or earning your investment back. You need to work out what's enough before you can get to what's extraordinary. And this moves you from starting from a place of fear, what if I can't do this, to starting from a place of confidence, I know I can do this if I put my mind to it. And that starts the dopamine flowing because success creates momentum towards bigger and bigger goals, goals that may not have felt possible when you first got started. So that's your minimum goal. And the next goal you wanna set is your target goal something that may take more effort, but is possible to achieve. This is a target that with work and diligence, you may be able to achieve and you'd love to achieve, but your success isn't quite as certain. So your target goal allows you to elevate from your minimum to something that's one step higher. And from there, you can set a stretch goal that's higher still. Your stretch goal is beyond the bare minimum and it's beyond the target. Now you're into wouldn't it be amazing if territory. And as the name suggests, this is something you may have to stretch way outside your comfort zone or even your current view of what's possible to achieve. So you're not likely to hit your stretch goal now. Stretch goals often live in the future. This is your reach for the stars goal. So let me give you an example of minimum target and stretch goals. Let's say you wanted to write a book because many people have that goal, especially people like you and me with valuable life experience or subject matter expertise. What would be good minimum target and stretch goals if you wanted to write a book? Let's say your minimum goal is to simply finish writing your book this year. Wouldn't you agree that's a great minimum goal to have and still a huge win for sure, right? Now let's say your target goal for this year is to publish your book on Amazon so someone could actually buy it. It's one thing to write a book and another thing entirely to publish it. Many people sit on manuscripts that never get seen. Even famous people like the great poet, Emily Dickinson. So publishing is a big deal and a great target goal to have. Now let's say your stretch goal for this year is to have an Amazon number one bestseller in your desired category or categories. So that's the minimum, which you know you can do with some focus and dedication, the target, which will take more effort to realize, but it's still possible, and the stretch. This is your wouldn't it be amazing if goal. Wouldn't it be amazing if you wrote your book this year, had it published and went to number one on the Amazon bestseller list in your desired categories? But why do so many people who wanna write a book not get there? 
It has a lot to do with not setting these three specific types of goals, minimum, target, and stretch. When I talk to people who want to write a book, they often say, I want to write an Amazon number one bestseller, or I want to get on the New York Times bestseller list. And while those stretch goals are awesome, if you only focus on that one big outside your comfort zone goal, whatever that is for you, you miss out on the stepping stones to get you there. It can feel insurmountable or unachievable, so you struggle to start or to keep going when the going gets tough. That's when you want to refocus on your minimum goal. Because can you agree that simply finishing your book is still a huge accomplishment? Absolutely. Not a lot of people in this world write and finish a book. So finishing a book is a huge achievement. And by having that focus on your minimum goal versus going straight for the stretch goal to become a bestseller, you're able to stay focused and on track because that's a game that you already know you can win. But if you're only focused on your stretch goal, you're not likely to celebrate the smaller wins. But when you can feel successful when you finish your book, that's going to fuel you to your target goal of getting it published. Because remember, success creates momentum. And then reaching that goal is going to give you another stepping stone to ultimately reach your bestseller stretch goal. But if you were to choose becoming a bestseller as your one big goal right now, and you've never written a book before, there may be moments when that goal, it feels out of reach. And that can lead to frustration, abandonment, and burnout stopping you before you even really get started. And I don't want that to happen. I'm 1000% invested in you reaching at least your minimum goal during EPM and setting you up for your target and stretch goals, which may or may not happen during the 12 weeks we're together. Because when it comes to big goals, sometimes it's not a matter of if, but when. So the thing that's really interesting is that by focusing on your minimum goal until you get it, then using that as a stepping stone to your target goal until you get that, you can actually increase your chances of reaching your stretch goal. If not now, then sometime in the future. As Voltaire famously said, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. So let's set your minimum target and stretch goals for EPM. And I've got specific recommendations for you. On your experienced product flight plan, you'll see four goals. Goal one is your MVP launch. Goal two is first sale. Goal three, prove your idea. And goal X is a whole lot more. Now, I recommend you use goal one as your minimum goal if you're just getting started. And that is to complete the MVP track, which is the first three modules of EPM, and launch your minimum viable product during the 12 weeks of the program. Because wouldn't you agree that simply launching your product is a huge accomplishment regardless of what happens? Absolutely. I mean, how many people do you know who've launched products? When you look around at your friends and your family, how many of them have launched products? Not a lot, right? So if you're just getting started and you haven't made money in your business before, then I recommend you set goal one as your minimum goal. Because here's the thing, launching puts you in the ideal position to answer the question, Will my idea fly? You can't make money if you don't launch. So everything you want, the money, the impact, the freedom, it all starts with launching. Regardless of what happens, you can't know if your idea will fly if you don't launch. That's why goal one, your MVP launch, is the official mission accomplished goal of the program. Because it's a goal that every student who joins EPM can hit. Regardless of your experience, your background, your audience, the kind of product you end up launching, you can hit this goal. And if you're just getting started, I recommend you use goal one as your minimum goal. And when you reach this goal, you'll earn your wings. When the time comes, just make sure to check it off on the membership site and submit your mission accomplished story to claim everything we've got in store for you when you reach this goal. Now, our next goal, goal two, is to make your first sale. Because would you agree that launching a product and making money, they're two different things. Absolutely. And making your first sale is always a huge accomplishment because it means that someone wants what you offer enough to invest their hard earned money and time. And for many people, time and money, they feel like they're in short supply. So if you're just getting started, I recommend you choose goal two, first sale as your target goal. Because as I always like to say, if you can do it once, you can do it again and again and again. Because here's the thing, 
making one sale, it could be luck. And we want to go beyond luck and really prove your product idea. And that's why goal three is to do just that, to prove your idea with either three sales or earning your investment in EPM back. And we believe so strongly in this goal that we've guaranteed it with our make your money back guarantee. After all, the mission of EPM is to design, market, and profit from your experienced product in 12 weeks or less. And profiting starts with earning your investment back. I believe with every fiber of my being that if you follow this flight plan, you complete the MVP track and you really use the coaching we provide to get feedback on all your MVP milestones that you can hit mission accomplished during the time frame of the program. Many students have done it before you and you can do it too. That said, if you've never made a cent in your business before, this may feel like a stretch goal. It can take some businesses years to become profitable if they don't have a proven roadmap to follow. This is what investing in your future looks like. It's all about investing time, money, energy, and resources now to create the future success that you desire. And sometimes that success takes time. And it's important to embrace your journey to success. So if you're getting started, I recommend choosing goal three as your stretch goal. And achieving your stretch goal of making three sales or more, it's a massive achievement. Once you've been able to make those first few sales, then it becomes a whole lot easier to make the next three sales. Then the next 10 sales, the next 100, and even 1,000 sales helping you arrive at big financial goals like $10,000, $30,000, $300,000, even $3 million. That's what happened for me, and that's what's possible for you too when you start out with a clear and achievable minimum goal that you know you can make happen in this 12-week period and target and stretch goals to help you reach for the sky. This is the key to success. Rather than getting hung up on having to create the perfect product and immediately have thousands of customers because that's what causes you to possibly never get off the launch pad, dragging your feet and taking months or even years to get your product to market. So those are my suggestions if you're just getting started and haven't made money before in your business. Simply use goal one, two, and three as your minimum target and stretch goals. Now, if you have made a little money in your business before, I recommend choosing goal two as your minimum goal. And you wanna make at least one sale with this new experience product of yours. And goal three, earning your investment back as your target. And then for your stretch goal, you can use goal X over here in the upper right hand corner of your flight plan. Goal X is anything you want it to be. Maybe it's earning double your money back, or maybe it's $10,000, or maybe it's $100,000. You get to name what a whole lot more looks like for you. Now, if you have a lot more experience and you've made a good amount of money in your business before, I recommend setting goal three, making your investment back as your minimum goal. Then you can use goal X to set both your target goal and your stretch goal for the experience product that you're focusing on during this program. Sound good? Okay. So those are my recommendations for your minimum target and stretch goals, depending on where you are at in your experience product flight plan already. Of course, what your goals are is totally up to you. And there are a lot of ways to get to those goals. For example, if one of your goals is to get to $2,500 and earn your EPM investment back, you could sell 54 units of a $47 product, or you could sell 38 units of a $67 product, 26 units of a $97 product, 17 units of a $147 product, 13 units of a $197 product, nine units of a $297 product, five units of a $497 product, or just four units of a $697 product, three units of a $997 product, or one $2,500 product. Now, I'm not gonna ask you to choose the price point of your product yet. That's gonna come in stage two, once you get clearer on what your product is. But it's a good thought to start having as you formulate how you're gonna reach the goals that you've set for yourself. Now, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to choose your minimum target and stretch goals as they relate to your product and revenue goals for the next 12 weeks in the Experience Product Masterclass. And you do that by completing the worksheet provided for the session, which you can download below this video. When you get your worksheet, it looks like this. Your next mission, should you choose to accept it, 
is to complete the two items on your Show Me the Money checklist. Step one, set your minimum target and stretch goals for our next 12 weeks together in this program. Step two, share a photo of you with your goals on the Show Me the Money thread in the EPM Facebook group. Let's take a closer look at step one, setting your minimum target and stretch goals. As we've discussed, I've given you some examples of what your minimum target and stretch goals might be based on your current situation. You can see the examples here. The first one showing recommended goals if you're new to business or you've never sold an online program before. And then we've got another example if you're a bit further along and you've made a little but not a lot of money in your business so far. And finally, you can see our last example here, outlining potential goals if you already have an existing and successful online program that you're looking to supercharge with the experience formula or you want to add a new experience product to your business. Once you've decided your goals, simply fill in the blanks here. Remember to be specific with your goals. Each one is something that you can clearly say you've achieved. It's either a yes, I've done it or no, I haven't. For example, launching your experience product. That's a clear yes or no answer. Getting your first sale. Another clear yes or no in terms of whether you've reached that goal or not. Once you have a clear and specific minimum target and stretch goal, then complete step two by writing your goals on a sheet of paper, taking a photo of yourself with your goals and posting it on the EPM Facebook group. You can find the link to the relevant thread in the action section below this video. An important note when it comes to your post in the Facebook group, we've actually created a special show me the money thread in the group where you can post your goals and photo. You can find the link to that post in the action section below this video. We encourage you to post on that specific comment thread for a few reasons. First, it helps us keep the group organized. And second, it makes it super easy for you to see posts from your fellow EPM classmates around this same exercise. And that can be very motivating and inspiring. Plus, it also means that I can easily check in and see how you're going. I really do look at those posts on a regular basis and I love seeing your progress. And by posting your progress into the group, it actually helps you achieve your goals and enjoy more success because it's been scientifically proven that when you share your commitment to your goals with others, you're 40% more likely to achieve those goals. That's right. Simply by sharing your post and letting others know about your goals, you're hacking your own biochemistry for success. You'll see we repeat this process throughout the masterclass at various times as we ask you to share your progress by posting in the Facebook group in the relevant thread for that topic. I think you'll come to really love this approach because one of the toughest things many people tell me about product creation is that it can feel so lonely and isolating, but not when you're an EPM student. You're not in this alone. We're here with you and these shared posts are a great way to feel that connection and for us to cheer you on. Plus, you get XP rewards and this is where it gets really fun. As you complete the various actions for each session, you'll be rewarded with XP. You can see the experience points you're eligible to receive in the action section under each video in this masterclass. The action section summarizes what you need to complete for each session and gives you a way to let us know that you're done. Once you've checked something off, that's what unlocks your XP rewards. Those rewards include getting one XP for watching this video. Simply let us know you've completed this action by clicking watched it and then pitching you unlock one XP. You'll also unlock two XP for completing your worksheet. Just let us know by clicking done it and then pitching pitching two XP. There may also be additional actions listed for which you'll get two XP. And if you're wondering why you get more XPs for those than watching this session, it's because let's face it, taking action is what's gonna get you to the goals that you just set. You won't reach those goals by simply watching videos. And for those sessions where we've listed a specific share in the Facebook group, you'll see another action you can check off to unlock two XP like we have in today's session. Bear in mind, not all Facebook shares get you XP. If it's an optional share, there is no XP. And we've made it super easy for you to see what your total potential XP haul is for any session. Simply look in the action sections under each video and it will all be laid out for you there. So you wanna collect as many XP as you can because these rewards are gonna become more and more valuable as you progress through the program. 
you're going to be able to use these XP to unlock bonuses and win prizes. Plus, every time you check a box and hear that ka-ching sound, it gets your dopamine flowing. And the thing about dopamine is that it's addictive. So you're going to want to keep taking action, checking off boxes, and collecting XP. Trust me on this. It's brain science. So go ahead and collect your XP below this video. Feels good, doesn't it? Congrats again on joining us in the Experience Product Masterclass. That's your first session done. I really look forward to getting to know you, and I cannot wait to see your Experience Product 12 weeks from now in the marketplace, getting customers and making money. Remember, the important thing is to start with trying to achieve your minimum goals. Don't set yourself up for failure by reaching for the stars right out of the gate. Let's take a grounded and realistic approach so you can get into action without triggering the fear and the overwhelm that comes from setting goals that feel impossible for you to achieve at this moment in your business. And I can promise you that very, very soon, you'll find your wings and achieve those reach for the stars goals. You got to start somewhere. You got to start with what you can do right now. Get into action, earn while you learn, build your launch pad and iterate your way to awesome. Then it's time to fly. I'll see you in our next session where we look at the path to a blockbuster hit product that will get you to market fast because the journey starts now. So go out there and live your message.